Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Gotham City. I'm your host, Levi Rosman. This is a podcast where I talk to people who live in the chess world on the 64 squares and also beyond them. In this episode, I'm speaking with the English Grandmaster, David Howell. Many of you know David Howell as a commentator. He is a main anchor for all of the Chess24 Meltwater Champions Chess Tour events, but he is also a 2700 rated player. He is an Olympic team member in England, and he's a super nice, charismatic guy with a fascinating backstory of being a child prodigy, and I hope you enjoy our conversation. So like the first thing I wanted to ask you was, I, I kept seeing you mentioning about uh, Norway and like Oslo specifically. So you live in Norway now? Is that is that a thing? Yeah, long story. I mean, I, I came here for this, uh, the Champions Chess Tour, kind of just one or two events originally. Um, they were like, oh, it's an audition, it's an audition. So I was actually planning to go home to England, but I got stuck here due to COVID regulations. And then they kind of offered me the long-term job. And uh, yeah, that was like a year and a, wow, nearly two years ago. So yeah, and I, I met a girl and stayed. So you know how it is. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm not really. I've lived in New York my whole life. I don't know how it is. Uh, okay. <laughs> Actually, in my in yeah, in my my wife's case and I, it's the opposite. So she met a boy, and now you know she's gonna yeah, uh, she's gonna stay uh, in New York uh, City. Oh wow, that's yeah. Congrats, congrats for the way I saw on Twitter. Yeah. Thank you, Super thank cool. you. Um, that's wow, that's wild. So I mean, you've lived in England your whole life, right? And then yeah, pretty much. And then uh, yeah, I mean, I was doing the traveling kind of nomad chess player thing, but. First time I've had a base in a while, and yeah, also. That so, did that then lead to like the friendship bromance with Magnus? Because it seemed like at first it started. Like I didn't know that you guys were super close. Did I just miss that? I feel like I've been following chess for a long time. I, I, just... <laughs> I mean, we were always like friends, but never like super close until I moved here. I guess. Um, I mean, I guess we grew up together. There was some mutual respect, and I played for his Norwegian team for a few years. But oh. it was only it was only after I came here that we started kind of partying together and doing other stuff, non not just the kind of formal chess relationship. But that's like that's like when your friendship is like solidified, like the partying. Uh, have you guys weightlifted exactly. together? Uh, maybe. All right, there we go. That, that's <laughs> you know, that's you got a you got a gym bro, you got a party bro. That's uh, no, I mean, I just I'm I'm being honest. Like I, I followed chess my my whole life, and then only recently I'm like, oh, and then when I looked up, uh, just getting like background in, info for the podcast, I realized you guys are like very close in age, like weeks apart. So did you play as juniors in World Youth and stuff like that? Yeah, I mean, um, I think I've told this story too many times, so I might not do it on the pod, but uh yeah oh, do, like do, do it do it our audience is listening <laughs> okay um yeah so i think we first met when we were like nine ten years old at these youth events and it was in 2002 it was the final round of the world under 12 uh, championship and like i faced him on board one he was leading and he needed to win uh, to get the gold medal and napomnishi was on the same points as him uh, and Nepomnishi was on board too and it, I ended up drawing some really long end game with Magnus and he was furious because Nepomniachi won and overtook got the gold and then Magnus didn't talk to me for seven years so uh, he was so angry like he would give me evils every time at tournaments <laughs> oh my god <laughs> uh... he didn't talk to you like as a rival right I'm assuming you weren't like uh... I mean at the time we were basically the same rating like, and everything but I kind of stayed in school I quit chess for a couple of years when I was young um and of course, Magnus kept going. So, um, so yeah, we knew each other. I mean, this 1990 crew, I mean, it was good and bad. Like having Jan, Nepomnishi, Magnus, MVL, Karyakin, all these guys, and Drake in oh my God. youth events. Youth events were not much fun. <laughs> oh my God, that sounds horrible. That actually sounds horrible. Um... I, I guess I wouldn't be who I am though if uh, if I didn't have those guys to push me. So, I don't know. Is is that actually how it works? You'd look around and go, well, they're they're going up, they're playing locally, so I gotta play locally too. And yeah, I mean, I, I definitely kind of worked harder just to try and keep up with them originally, but then they all kind of got really good, and I was like, okay, I'm happy with <laughs> my level. But uh, well, yeah, 1990 crew. Yeah, I was. I'm trying to actively think about which players were uh, the strongest in their year. Like 1995, I'm. I'm sure we have yeah. some people, but um, ah, you're 95, right? 
Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, 95, but like uh, 2006, <laughs> 2005, <laughs> this, this crew of dudes just slowly going up. If you look at the junior ranking, everyone has gained 50 points in the last month. It's completely Oh, nuts. man, uh, I know. And like, my rating's basically the same as it was a few years ago, and the ranking's gone down so much because all the juniors are just above. It's just, <laughs> yeah, they're all, I mean, they'll all be dominating in a few years. Why'd you quit chess when you were younger? What, what age did you quit? When did you come back? Uh, um, so around the ages 14 to 16, I barely played, um, just like once a year, maybe twice a year. Uh, again, long story, just school and I was a bit down about it. And then uh, I also, when I went to university, like between 2010 and 14, I played a little bit, but not much. So uh, what'd you study? Uh, my undergrad was English literature and philosophy. And then my master's was medieval English literature. So not very practical and not, not very easy to talk about. Uh, wow. But that, does that mean you like to just sit and like talk about things? I mean, is that what that means or? Probably. I mean, that's why I guess I became a commentator and just too much to talk about. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. But I, I barely read a book since university just because it's, it was too much. Uh, <laughs> but any book. <laughs> just any book. I see a page and I get cold sweats. So. I, but I, I feel like that's kind of common for like chess players. No, I don't read. <laughs> like I, I, I consume media digitally and the only thing yeah. I do read is chess. So yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's much quicker. It's much more time efficient, right? Like media and film and I don't know, YouTube. Yeah. Books. Yeah, it's, 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 it's definitely much simpler. I, yeah, I definitely yeah. get that vibe. Um, Mm, wow. I, I, I quit chess too. I was nowhere near. Okay. I'm, I'm sure at 14 you already like I am or. Yeah. Like I had a GM norm in 2500, but then I just, I don't know why. How I didn't do you quit then? How does that, like, what, that's crazy. I quit because yeah. I was 2000, David. <laughs> <laughs> How old were you? How old were you? I was 12. <laughs> I quit for like three years. <laughs> That's still pretty good. I, I mean, yeah, it's it's nothing special. Uh, I I get a lot of jokes because I tell this story a lot, like about being you know, twelve <laughs> and quitting, and it's it's hard to do a podcast and not repeat yourself. Um, yeah, yeah, I can understand that. Okay, I, you can I, repeat yourself. <laughs> well, I was gonna. I mean, it, it, like if you're if you're twenty five hundred and have a norm, and you get told that as an adult, n you know, no no adult's gonna say, oh yeah, like it make it it's uh it makes sense to quit. But I guess as a teenager, there's like moments where you just like ah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, I don't care. You know, I'm going to go do this, this other thing. Um, exactly. I was like, oh, I just want to get on the football team. Just want to, the soccer team. <laughs> just want to nail my exams. Is there, just do is there stuff. any, ch there's more chess culture in England than there are in, than there is in other places, but uh, it, it's definitely still cooler in school to not do chess, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I got the old nicknames and the old like stereotypes and stuff. Oh, it's chess boy. Like, 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 oh, chess boy. <laughs> Uh, I think it was like, yeah, like some guy was like, oh, it's chess man. And I was like, no, 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 it's Spider-Man. And then, uh, yeah, that led to a fight. So <laughs> yeah, oh. there was all kinds of, uh, chess uh, I mean, it, chess, I don't know why. Yeah. Chess man. Yeah. I don't know why it got to me, but I guess everyone at 14 is a bit uh, still learning away. It got to you cause you're human, you know, I, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I remember even now, like when I was in third and fourth grade, the teachers would call my parents and be like, oh, you know, he should bring in his trophy. And I remember I'd bring in my trophy to school, which was the size of me. And it would be in the principal's <laughs> office. And I don't know, looking back, I'm like, I, that wasn't fun. Cause kids would just see it. And then they'd be like, oh, ew, chess, you know, so I, I yeah. get it. Um, I'm, I'm sure it, uh, I don't, I don't know if there's more acceptance nowadays, like nowadays, some cultures, at least they celebrate success a bit more. When I was young, it wasn't a thing. But. Well, I feel like 10, 15 years ago, if you saw a kid, you could tell if they played chess or not. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't think you, like a kid ran up to me recently who looked like he was a, like a California surfer kid. And yeah. he was like, dude, I watch your videos all the time. I'm like, really? <laughs> like, why? <laughs> you don't look the part. He looked like he could be in like a, you know, like one of those like high school movies where the actors are 30, but play high schoolers. So just riding the waves, got your pod in his ears. Like, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I guess, I guess it, yeah, it really has all changed. I mean, I, don't know. I think something like 95% of the audience of any chess content now, 98% <laughs> is from the last two years, uh, yeah, which yeah. is, which is, which is wild, which has definitely led to some, um, 
some things like, for instance, is your main profession now? Would you ca you know characterize it as like host commentator? Is that um, not yeah. a professional chess player anymore? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'll just say chess something. I don't know, but not player. Yeah, you're right. But you were a player. I was looking back like 2017, 18, 19. Every month your rating was moving. So you were playing. I mean, what it was like league yeah. games? Is that? Yeah, like I play in league games, tournaments, just anything I could do. I mean, I was barely doing anything else other than playing. But I love it more now. Uh, I feel much happier now when I sit down and play at the board just because, I don't know, it's not my main thing, maybe, uh, if that makes sense. Less pressure. Yeah, I saw you play a bit. You played a bit recently, right? Or Let's not talk about that. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> let's, let's talk about good oh. things, you know? Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I did play recently, long story short. Uh, oh my God, like the way my approach to chess in 2016, 2017, 2018, which is when I got my IM norms was basically, okay. if I saw David Howell play a game and I liked the <laughs> opening idea, I would analyze it for an hour and then I would play it in blitz and I would go to a tournament and I could beat like title players with it. Thank you. You know, now everything is studied to death and it's, yeah. and like everyone's just better, like just better at everything. And uh, I'm not, and I had to put in the work to get there would be, would be crazy, which is why like, I was super impressed. Like you came back and at your level, which is, I mean, you were, I think 27, what, 15, 27, 12, like peak, but you're, you're mm -hmm. like up there. It's all a range of, you know, 30, 40 points. Did you not feel that pressure when mm -hmm. you came back? Like, did you, how hard did you work to still have good results? Um... <laughs> Do you want the honest answer or? I, I, <laughs> um, I, want, I want the whole answer, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, last year, so I barely studied at all but, you know, between, I mean, not on my own chess, at least I was doing a bit of teaching, some commentary and stuff, but uh, I barely studied my own chess, any openings, anything between the pandemic hitting in early 2020 and I guess Grand Swiss last year. So for like a year and a half, um, I barely studied anything. Then I played this, I played a warm up tournament, played the Grand Swiss. I was just playing like one night of three G3, uh, two G3 on every game as well. Yeah, you fuckers just... like to do that, huh? <laughs> you GMs, you always just get the ready G3 either. And I lose to you guys 90% of the time. Like I know the theory and I still lose. It's yeah. crazy, but it worked, right? I mean, it's like... Yeah, I mean, I literally just did that. And then Black, I just played Berlin. And that's that's my repertoire. And I don't know, somehow the results were still pretty decent or... Um, I mean, I'm, I, f I hate myself for it. I sit at the board, I'm like, oh, I, I should know what to do in this position, but I don't. But actually, that I find that quite liberating, just being able to freestyle a bit. Um, and even, re even recently, like before Olympiad, uh, I mean, my preparation was basically just doing some fitness, like did zero openings. I just, just in the mornings before the games, uh, just, I don't know, just trying to be present. That's my main, uh, my main thing these days. And sometimes it goes really badly, sometimes it goes really well, so. But it hasn't it hasn't gone really badly since you came back, right? I mean, even Olympiad, you were just a, a killer. Um, yeah, um, yeah, Olympiad. I guess things just fell into place. Like uh, I don't know how it happened. Just, <laughs> I mean, I was just winning games without doing much. And sometimes, I guess, you get lucky with opponents. You get lucky with, I mean, team tournaments that can happen when your opponents overpress and um, stuff you, like that. So you were board one for England, right? No, board three um oh. initially they yeah they initially wanted me to be on board one but um team politics <laughs> i won't go into too much detail oh i see i see i see uh, Ooh, board one was um it was adams michael adams, adams. Was, okay yeah, uh, that, that, yeah that makes sense um i should i honestly i should i should know this a little bit better but mm -hmm. there were so many incredible performances that like yeah. I, I know you individually <laughs> did extremely well i just didn't even realize that wow board three do you think that do you think that helped a little bit like board three to get like a I mean, you're like, are you the strongest, like maybe the top three, top four strongest board three, I would imagine, except, I mean, okay, US has some, yeah. has some players, but... Uh, I mean, if you take Wesley out of the equation and all the Indians, uh, <laughs> pregnant and... Uh, but but you're higher see. rated. I mean, you're higher rated, right? I mean, it's... <laughs> yeah, I guess. Uh, I guess I'm similar to Prague and... Eric, well, Eric Geisy and Prague maybe slightly above me now, but, but yeah, I mean, I felt, I felt like there was no one I was scared of on board three, at least. Um, but yeah, uh, I think next time they'll, they've told me I might play higher and that it's a different kind of remit. Like board one, you just got to stay solid and not win. Yeah. Uh, well, not lose. Um, board three, you just have to try and kill everyone. So yeah, it suits yeah, me a bit yeah. more. <laughs> I can I can imagine. You got a gold medal, right? In, uh, bron uh, no, 
sorry was it board three or, or you got a bronze, bronze yeah. medal individual something like that uh i got a gold individual uh on board three yeah but but like in the past like i mean oh, okay. in like 20 i don't remember you're gonna have to uh, like yeah. 2013 like <laughs> something like that uh, um that was my first olympiad medal ever like oh. team or individual um i think that's why i did it in the chicken way and sat out at the end uh, I, I kind of I didn't know. Yeah. I, I didn't know what. I what. <laughs> you said okay. Just, so there, there was some controversy because uh, England in the final round uh, we played against Moldova, and if we win, we get like sixth place. Um, if we ended up losing and we came fifteenth or something, but um, it was like if I play and if I draw, there's a chance Pragnananda overtakes me on the individual side, and maybe I just get silver. Um, and the team we were like debating, it's like pros and cons of me playing. Like, obviously I'm in form, there's a higher chance that we'll win, but, uh, but then I'm risking my medal and the team can only get top 10. It's like, is top 10 better than an individual medal? It's like, yeah, all these debates, but, uh, yeah, in the end they were, they were quite nice. They were like, okay, just take the gold. Uh, we'll try and win anyway. Unfortunately they didn't, but, um, but yeah, it's yeah. tough cause Moldova had the event of a lifetime, right? I yeah they uh, these kids again they're just too good <laughs> what's if kids? Underrated. Well, I, I, ivan's not a kid i don't know who else is on yeah. the team though i mean i say kid uh anyone younger than me i call it <laughs> i see i see <laughs> no, no i shouldn't but uh yeah i guess they're all early 20s so. but they saved that 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 uh, i just remembered it was in i it was in my last recap video the the hamitovici game right that game was insane and, yeah like i was watching it and I thought we were going to take it on that board. And then five minutes later, he just turned it around. Yeah, so. yeah that, that's sort of what it felt. It felt uh, more like a turnaround than a giveaway, but I guess it has to be a little bit of both. I mean, in chess, right? Like uh, you have to, the only way you can get back into the game is if the opponent uh, messes up. But I mean, it was an epic match. It was, a uh, yeah, Moldova had a, I mean, I suppose it wasn't an epic match being on the team, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you can it was heartbreaking, it. but. Yeah. Well. Oh, well, it's yeah. it was a it was a fun as a spectator and as a you know a <laughs> professional uh, recapper of the games, but uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I, can, I can imagine it must um, have been a feast for you. Just I mean, all the Indians, awesome. the Pakistani matches, Americans. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, now now Arjunary Gaisi is the number two in India, and he's twenty seven thirty. So that's nuts. Like that, yeah. there might be a future in six months where Vishy Anand isn't the number one rated <laughs> Indian player, which is it's kind of disturbing i mean can you imagine a universe like magnus is number two like no i mean it just doesn't make any sense exactly i mean for as long as we've been around uh, (laughs) these guys have been bossing it right like yeah um, and i mean no no, i was gonna say like it's not even that vichy has Mm -hmm. uh fallen off he's 27 60 and these dudes are overtaking it's it's yeah crazy i mean when vichy plays he still kills it like yeah yeah it's crazy uh, um, but I'm I'm proud of Eric I see like I, I played him in Blitz just after the Grand Swiss last year and like there was some Blitz tournament afterwards and he just destroyed me 2-0 and I said to him afterwards I was like in two years you're going to be 2800 and now he's suddenly <laughs> so um, he's on course he's on course yeah I have a funny like it's not a story I don't know Arjun very well but I remember I played his uh, one of his first coaches um, Victor Mikhailovsky and I played him back to back weeks. I played him twice in the span of five days in two different tournaments, which was funny. But uh, yeah, he posted on Facebook like, "Congrats to my student. He got three IM norms and three GM norms this summer, or something like that." And I'm like, "Oh wow!" And that was it. Now this dude's like, you know, gonna get to 2800 and just crushing everybody. And uh, <laughs> I think it helps to be kind of soft spoken the way Arjun is. I-, I feel like the less clippable moments you have. And yeah, we, yeah. you and I both know, uh, we were both, both thinking about um, the chess speaking for itself. Like, I just feel like, like if Hans yeah. succeeds with that, it's going to be sick, but it, it's tough to live up to. Exactly. He's, he's putting stuff on his own shoulders that maybe he doesn't need, uh, doesn't need right now. But yeah, I'm rooting for Hans, uh, but <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, more. I mean, you, me too. Honestly, I want to, <laughs> I want to see him do well. And if he can trash talk and do well, it's going to be, you know, all the, by the way, did, did he, did he win money in Miami? Is there a baseline? Because they posted this graphic and I just felt it was very insulting. Oh. Uh, <laughs> like Zero dollars because he didn't win a match in Rapid. Like, is there baseline pay for these guys? I think there's like a guarantee, like okay. a minimum. It, it'll be, it won't be much. Uh, it would just, maybe it'll be a couple of thousand dollars uh, or maybe two, three thousand. But still, it's, it's that graphic is 
a bit damning, yeah. I know, yeah. Um, how how was Miami? Was it overall good or man, low blow? I didn't even get to go. We were commentating in uh, Oslo. So. Wait, what? <laughs> budget cuts, budget cuts. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 really? Wait, I yeah. swear I saw like photos of you at the beach. Did I just for the, imagine all that? Um, oh my God. You might have done. It might have been the beach here in Oslo. So, um, yeah, not Miami Beach, unfortunately. I wish. What? Wait, yeah. but, oh my God. I had no they, idea. I was not trying to like, like insult you. I, I did <laughs> no, not I'm realize. Yeah. They called us up like one month before. They're like, oh man, budget cuts. I can't afford to send you out to Miami anymore. Sorry. <laughs> And wow. we, yeah, we couldn't do much about it, unfortunately. Does that so. mean that they had booked? I'm assuming. I mean, I don't know if you if you know, and if you know, you might not be able to share. But does that mean that they like had everything booked months prior, and then? I... Um, yeah, I mean, they. I think they booked some studio. They booked a set number of hotel rooms and stuff, but they hadn't booked our flights. Um, oh. And and in the end, the hotel rooms, everything. I think they went to like the entourage of the players and stuff. So, um, oh, and the, wow. the the studio just got turned into some press room. So yeah, it was a bit, <laughs> it was a bit depressing, but uh, we tried to put a smile and yeah, just I'm, keep going. I'm very sorry to hear that. That means that the games <laughs> and the rounds were sort of ending like very late too, right? That means in-, in... Yeah, we'd finish here in Oslo like 11 p.m. midnight quite regularly. After commentating for five hours, can you sleep? Or are you just sort of like pumped yeah. up and like you? Yeah, like uh, my fellow commentators, they they have this running joke that I get like more energetic the longer the day goes on. They're like they're like they're really energetic at the start, and then they're like dying, barely saying anything the last hour, and then I'm just I really want to go like to this chess pub afterwards, or I want to keep the night going. There's this Norwegian tradition of like Nashville, which is like after party. I want to go to that after the commentary, but they're all oh, just spiel, like no spiel, like offer spiel, night spiel yeah yeah it's like after play <laughs> yeah so um but yeah uh, i don't know about you how about you when you do your kind of streams or videos uh well, easy to turn off or? okay so well i think this the live studio would would make me have to be energetic because i mm. feel like there's a pressure when you're not in your house if you're like i mean you you know you dress up nice you have cameras on you and you don't yeah. do you see yourself at all or they, they don't have uh, like a... Yeah, so we have a screen in front, so we see what the viewers see. Um, oh, okay. So for example, like if the chessboard is suddenly up on the screen, I'll be like, oh, like, check it out. Or if you see the players, or if it's on us, we know whether what you guys uh, what you guys are watching. Okay, yeah, I was going to say like, because here I can just boot up, I can just see myself and I have the chat, but I, it's so much easier to sort of be lazy and be by yourself here. I, I actually find that... Um, a lot of that comes down to co-hosts. Like if you have co-hosts you've never had before, or if you don't really like someone that you're co-hosting with, which in my case hasn't ever happened, but yeah. you, the vibe is like, it's not, it takes it's like so much more energy to bring yourself to talk. Yeah. Uh, but when you're live, I, I don't know. I mean, it's uh, yeah. find it within you, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I guess the lights are very bright. That's the only thing that sometimes tires me out, but, um, but yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I can't do that stuff. I, I hate that stuff. I, I reflected off the wall. I had to do recordings oh, recently wow. and it, it, yeah, like you put it on yourself, your eyes just like burn out. I mean, it's, uh, oh man, I need to pay you for some streaming lessons or something. I, I struggled as well. I, I vaguely tried to set up something and the light is just banging. Like, <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna stream now? Is that, oh, I don't know. Uh, it depends if I, if I, this whole takeover means the job is gone. I don't know all this stuff. Uh, oh, uh, oof. Yeah, that actually Trend, is one of changing. that I was gonna I was gonna say that's one of the things with this whole like chess.com uh, play Magnus thing is um, people are sort of like making making some jokes and people saying okay like whatever positive negative but you guys legitimately don't know how you're gonna get integrated right because like it used to be you just catch your commentary on chess.com or chess24 or if it's on Hikaru's channel or whatever yeah. but you can't have a chess 24 broadcast if chess 24 ceases to exist. So yeah. is that, is that not like I, on a serious, I mean, is that like something that everybody's sort of collectively discussing and trying to find a way to, it's all still in the legal process, right? So it's not even, you haven't actually like talked to the leaders and, of the teams and everything like that. Mm, not yet. No. I mean, I guess that will happen in a couple of months. Uh, so still limbo at the moment, lots of speculation, lots of hearsay. Um, 
I see. Yeah, I mean, off the record, um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I still want to have chats with people just to find out. But yeah, at the moment, it's kind of just get on with things and uh, see where the chips fall, I guess. I see. I see. I see. Yeah. I mean, of course, uh, the, the positive spin of all of these things is like, we want to grow the game. Like that's sort of what basically every individual in any, uh, you know, position in chess says like grow the game yeah. and everything. But I mean, like I, I made a little clip about the whole news and I, and I basically was like, look, like this stuff happens for a reason. Right. Um, and it will yet to be determined whether it's good or bad that there is sort of like one place for, live chess events or whatever that might be. Um, It would be really strange if the commentary team for, you know, an upcoming tour based primarily on the sponsors that Play Magnus Group found would not include you, you know, Kaya and and Yovanka. That would be strange. Simon, I guess. Is Simon full-time now or is is there part-time? I I never know. Um, Somewhere in between. (laughs) I mean, when it's convenient for him, I think. Uh, (laughs) That's sort of what I felt like. I like tune in sometimes. He's not there. Then he's there. I'm like, when the side went what um i'm just yeah. gonna find more yeah. you know more voices and, and everything um, exactly yeah. simon's awesome uh, yeah but i mean I, I guess the question is now that i mean things things are kind of going to be based in the us do they kind of bring i guess the us market is the big one like do they bring in more uh, american voices do they relocate the studio over to the us um questions like that and yeah, sure, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll actually be colleagues. Maybe we're both going to be on the set. I don't know. They might, they might, they might <laughs> oh, man, ask me no. to do it. I would love that. I would love that. You can take my job. I'll just, uh, I'll just chill for, a, chill for a while. Hey, listen, anything <laughs> to get within a few feet of Magnus, you know? Uh, that's, uh, that's obviously the, uh, the, the running okay. joke. I've never, I've never seen Magnus up close. When I was like 10, uh-huh. he walked into the New Yorker hotel with, I guess, his dad because he was staying in New York. And I was like, is that Magnus? And then I just like went back to my tournament game. <laughs> I've never, uh, I tried to go to the world championship. Did you go to the world championship in New York by any chance? Or I, I mean, obviously you went in London, but did you? Yeah, yeah. Um, just London, uh, not New York, unfortunately. And Dubai, again, we were stuck here commentating in Oslo. So. Um, oh my God. That's, wow. Yeah, that's, that's the only one like in London. You didn't get to go to Dubai? No, that's, that's all, up. literally everyone, everyone in Play Magnus group, apart from the three commentators, like all the four commentators, like it was just crazy. They were all just jetting out, like sending snaps from this uh, water park. And... Yeah, that play, my, my, I mean, listen, my, my grandparents, they like to travel. They don't go to a lot of places just to be like, wow, look at all this like architecture and, uh, and, and things <laughs> to do. That's all they did in Dubai. They were like, yo, look at this indoor ski resort. Like, look at this crazy thing. And I'm like... <laughs> Yeah, um, but you went to New York, two thousand sixteen. I tried. I, I, I uh, one of the chess parents I taught had like a VIP pass, and I showed up, and they're like, "Your name's not here," uh, and then I got turned away. So that was sad. And then they did. drew before I could even like force my way, and it was the last <laughs> round, and then they drew. Oh god! Um, have you taught chess in in all your time being a professional? It's kind of fun. You like yeah. meet a lot of unique people. You can like. You ever taught any famous people? Uh, a few, probably less famous than the ones you've taught. Um, I taught the producer of the Harry Potter movies. Uh, That's way does... more famous than Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, taught some others. Uh, taught some, I'm not sure about famous, but quite affluent <laughs> families. But um, but yeah, I don't know. I really, really love teaching, but I, I, yeah, I'm quite picky about the students. Uh, it's got to come from within yeah the student has to be good the family and all that has to be good also like the compensation has to be good there it gets to a point you can't just take every <laughs> student you know you, you i i yeah. talked about it with uh with sam uh and it was like you basically name the price you'd be happy with and you know you cut back on how many people would be willing to pay that but if they do then mm-hmm. great um, yeah yeah exactly yeah, I, was, I was teaching uh for for a while in new york yeah i mean I feel like, I, I don't know, maybe it's wrong, but I feel like English wealth is completely different than New York wealth. I think it's like castle, you know, it's, uh, I feel like it could be very different. Um, but you don't, you don't still teach uh, anymore, I guess. No, I mean, May, yeah. June, 2020, I said, sorry guys, this online thing looks pretty good. Yeah. So yeah, unless they offer them the castles. <laughs> no, I mean, even, yeah, even then I, I've had some, like I've had some actors like reach out on Instagram. I, I don't want to like dox them, but if they listen to this, you know, I, 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 you know, and I would just be like, yeah, I have a friend who's a teacher. He's really good. And there, there you go. Um, oh, sure. But uh, I, I did like a few collabs with people and, and, and all these like obviously big streamers and, and, and pong champs. Like that stuff is, that stuff is uh, pretty interesting, but 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I get tired teaching now. I, I feel like I pour my heart and soul into making, you know, content that's like you could watch it. And then if I get asked the question of like, what's the best opening? I'm like, I made 20 <laughs> videos on the subject. You know what I mean? Like this is so yeah. draining. Um, no, yeah, actually, enough. I was going to ask you about the whole commentary thing, like, and teaching mm-hmm. when it first kicked off in, mm-hmm. I guess, March or April 2020. It seemed from the outside completely different. Like now we're used to it, but it seemed completely different because it was like Yovanka, right? She's like been in chess for a long time. Um, mm-hmm. And like you've been in chess for a long time. And like, I guess Kaya was supposed to be like TV anchor, also Nor- like Norwegian based, but sort of kind of like the facilitator and maybe breaking things down like for beginners and whatnot. And I remember, correct me if I'm wrong, I remember I saw a lot of backlash because you guys did things like you didn't use coordinates and other things like that. So, can you yeah. talk me through that that phase and what it was like? Because it was very clearly supposed to be like beginner friendly, but I mean, it seemed like there was like pushback. Then people got used to it. Maybe <laughs> you guys made some changes that I didn't even realize. Yeah. Um, so yeah, originally when I kind of came over to Norway for the first time, when they kind of uh, asked me to well, join the panel, um, we were given a list of things we were allowed to say, not not allowed to say, and. I guess the idea was to make it more like a sport where we don't kind of force people to necessarily think too much about what the commentator is saying. They kind of see what's in front of them and then we just kind of describe it rather than actually um, kind of dig too deep. And yeah, I mean, it was like learning a whole new language or kind of actually unlearning a whole new language like with the com- with the notation. Uh, occasionally I'd slip and say, oh, E4 or <laughs> F6, but then uh, I think that's fine if the... I mean, it's more kind of not going into super deep variations. Um, it's not kind of the other kind of tried and tested maybe chess 24 method, where it's uh, two very, very strong grandmasters and they're kind of spitballing ideas to each other while the board isn't moving. And sometimes they're talking about positions seven, eight moves deep. And right. um, so we were trying to do the opposite of that. But uh, I think finding the middle ground was the hard part. And yeah, after, after the first few months, we didn't really get any complaints anymore. Like we would use coordinates, but just not do variations unless the board was up so we could show it basically uh, like the analysis board. And uh, yeah, I mean, these days I very rarely see any kind of um, pushback on that. I mean, which is maybe a good thing. Uh, maybe just the more experienced players, the more kind of uh, the ones you watch to improve. Uh, they're just watching kind of the GM channels or other streams. But uh, those who are new to the game and beginners um, or people who just want to kind of have chess on in the background, because I know that's a huge amount of people, um, they seem to uh, do okay with it at the moment. And we have got a bit more advanced. Like now we don't explain what castling is or en passant anymore. (laughs) That was, uh, uh, for me, that was tricky at first, the first few shows. Right. Because you kind of need like a little baseline to get into the whole thing. But when chess is booming, it's a constant... In, you know, inflow of people who know nothing. Yeah, so I yeah. can imagine it's it's very difficult. Uh, I, yeah, I mean, I, I struggled with the same thing. Um, mm-hmm. Was it hard yeah. to like get, you know, get onboarded and get told what you could and couldn't say in a, for a chess event by likely individuals who were not in the chess world? It was probably like TV producing and, and this kind of thing. <laughs> I'm sure it's weird. Like I'm, yeah. I'm so happy that it's just me and I can make my own content. I, I would also like probably struggle with that because. I... Yeah. I mean, you're, you're completely right. It was weird. I mean, I think just because it was so brand new, it's like we tried to embrace it and Yvanka, she's super good at trying, kind of taking on new ideas. We also had yeah Kaya who's from the sports background. So for her, it was natural. I think for maybe for me, it was the hardest. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the people who we were kind of discussing things with, they do play chess, but again, it's a very low level where I'm not sure they feel confident with the notation and stuff like that. So yeah, it was super difficult. And I was always kind of trying to kind of push that the audience were taking them on a journey. So as we, as kind of they learn more about chess, we step up slightly um, with descriptions, with levels, um, just kind of yeah, and now kind of two seasons later, two years later, we are kind of uh, at a much higher level and I think people are enjoying that. But uh, yeah, you're right. It's uh, it's always difficult when, it's not that we were censored ever. It was just when you have to follow a script. Or, um, right. That, that was completely new, um, a new language, new, uh, new expectations. It was very different from playing chess. 
Was there just... any like teasing behind the scenes or kind of like you know ribbing from your oh, chess peers, like people your level and you know around there, like oh look look at you, it doesn't even use coordinates anymore, you know this kind of a thing. Yeah. Was there any of that? Yeah, I still get it. Oh my god! Uh, really? <laughs> at, at the um, at the Olympiad recently, when I won the gold, Aronian, like we were staying in the same hotel, and Aronian at dinner, he came up to me. He was like, "Is that the key to winning gold medals? You just don't know how to write down your moves." <laughs> like, really? <laughs> <laughs> you just spend more time <laughs> talking about the position. Like you don't need to calculate. You just work things out by talking about it. Uh, and then, oh, Giri, he's the one. Like he'll tweet me. He'll yeah. He'll. <laughs> he'll troll us in his post-match interviews but i think it's kind of in a, from a good kind of from a good place like i think they actually enjoy the fact it's a bit different and um that's funny yeah. well I, I i think levon and anish are probably like two of the more easygoing guys in chess right i mean I exactly like, yeah they'll uh that's that that's very very funny god i can't imagine what gets said about my videos um, <laughs> uh, i've only heard good stuff man i've only heard good stuff well you know the, that that's sort of like that's sort of the thing that's why i asked you that question because i can imagine you know it, like even i was like why won't they use the coordinates and then you guys started using i'm like all right you know but i i, I get yeah. it because i went through the same thing uh and i had to listen to you know various feedback and like you just got to be super basic it's honestly got to be it's exactly like you said like you yeah. got to be able to put it in the background not watch do work, you know, mm -hmm. write stuff down. You just listen and you're like, oh, this is interesting. Yeah. yeah. And so sometimes I, I have you guys on. I mean, I, I yeah, to, to, sometimes I put on chess just in general, but it's a lot mm -hmm. harder to get like Leko and Svidler. Like you got, you got to watch, you got to see the board because they're yeah, yeah. discussing very legitimate ideas, but I don't want to use my brain. Yeah. yeah. I just want to, uh, you know, I just want to hear like, <laughs> oh, what's happening? Oh, Prague's winning? Like, whoa, <laughs> you know, and then like I go, I'm like, oh, cool. And then I, you know, I go back to one doing So, yeah. Exactly. Like as long as we just shout when there's a blunder or when something's happened, then <laughs> that's the main thing. I think. Yeah, that it 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 sucks on the one hand, on but but on the other hand, like chess has never been more popular, so we're sort of probably doing something right. Um, yeah. I mean, I mean uh, I've also like I've also spoken to like like you said peers. I mean, other grandmasters and stuff who say they actually have the show on in the background like quite often, just because they want to come in like once every game and just see what's happened. They don't want to kind of. They don't want to be stuck glued to the screen for seven hours every day. So, uh, so yeah, I guess I don't know how you find it, but yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of worked out well. I can't complain too much. Yeah, it, it's some people watch the start to finish in in some sport. I I, uh, I even in, like I'm a big fan of basketball. I I don't watch the whole game. I'll watch the start. I'll watch the first you know five ten. Then I'm gonna do what I want. Then I come back. Oh, look at the score. And then if it's close in the last few minutes, like I'm gonna tune in. And I, I feel <laughs> like it's the same with chess. Um, yeah, yeah. Candidates, I'm not watching the whole game. Uh, even these online events, like I see what happens in round one, I go do whatever, I come back. I'm like, oh, like, you know, Magnus won two and a half, half. Okay, cool. What's going on in that other match? Like, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, but some people watch the whole thing, but I think most people go in and out, and it would just be nice to know who's winning. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we accomplished that now. And yeah, yeah. you just tune in within 10, 30, you know, 10, 20 seconds, you know what's going on. Like sometimes these other broadcasts, especially if they're just talking, Mm. talking about god knows what and then you know yeah. five minutes go by i'm like i don't know who's winning i don't know what the scores are in any match <laughs> like i and that's fine because there's people who are strong enough that they don't care they just tune in and that's what it is but um i mean i had a lot of fun of this with the world championship i i don't know i watched so many broadcasts for world championship i have absolutely no recollection if you guys like uh were like intensely involved or like if, if you guys were yeah. doing recaps but i felt like it was so slow there that you could extract as much value and like resources as possible. Like, you, but I'm assuming it would, you guys still had to kind of break it down for, for noobs, right? Even one match that's eight hours yeah. long, for example. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was a different challenge because actually, so when we normally do the champions chess tour, we try to stick to one game per round and then we'll go back. If there's another game going, we'll recap it or, uh, but yeah, world championship, different pace, uh, 30 minutes between each move sometimes um yeah we've definitely run out of things to talk about once we've gone into the nitty-gritty and yeah i mean it was nice to actually there i think we started upping the level and um we started going to more detail actually showing variations a bit more showing pretty patterns showing tactics uh, but but yeah i mean actually one of the highlights for me out of any commentary that i've done was that game six where it was that marathon game and um, i think we were on air for nearly nine hours straight without a break and um 
yeah at the end like I think we were all brain dead but I was so high on just feeling like we've witnessed something amazing like and I think we had record numbers that day at least I I mean I don't know on chess.com for example but chess 24 across our stream and Geary and Holger I think they were commentating as well we had like hundred something thousand uh, watching yeah. at one time and um, I mean that was just that was just crazy and they stuck with us even though it was nine hours even yeah. though it was like um, so that shows, I mean, that was maybe the peak of the, or the kind of culmination of the chess boom. That, that was the peak, yeah, peak of the chess boom and collapse of the match for one of the two players. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, I, I, rem- yeah, I remember that day so clearly. I mean, that, that day I had made plans to like travel with my, with my mom to go visit, uh, to go visit my grandparents. And like my day got pushed four hours like it, it was it was <laughs> unreal i had to cancel all my plans we, my wife and i we canceled tennis like we canceled and it just kept going and uh, even despite the nine hours of broadcast people still watch the recap like i think that mm. video got a million views in like two weeks i mean it was just <laughs> like that game broke everybody's record <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah i mean it was uh it's so worth it though still worth yeah it. yeah i can't i mean i can't imagine being you know feeling like 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 the winner of that game. I mean, I also can't imagine feeling like the loser. But yeah. one of my talking points today was actually going to be the fact that I think you have the average like longest game always. Like I don't know what it is. You you there was a tournament you had like multiple hundred fifty move games or something. Yeah. yeah. How does that happen? Like what is is it just the style thing? And also you get into time trouble. Like you you <laughs> right? Like I mean that's. But you yeah. But let's you twenty seven hundred. So what? How'd that become? <laughs> your signature move there like uh, 100 move games you know eight hour games yeah i mean it, i guess it started when i was quite young um like for example with magnus we have this joke when we were 11 when we played in this like kind of medal match in this world under 12 uh, championship already that was like a six hour game it was like a long grind in some bishop end game and uh, obviously magnus was famous for that when he was younger like uh, just going for equal end games just tiring out his opponents and winning and i think maybe i was a bit inspired by that but also my style is uh i mean i'm i don't like direct confrontation in life as a person so i think it's the same on the chessboard i i kind of like to keep kind of uh keep pieces on the board keep the tension like uh in general i kind of pride myself on being able to concentrate quite well for long time uh, long periods of time so i think it just plays to all my strengths and um I think it was just an unconscious thing until I was maybe in my mid twenties. And then I realized actually, this is how I win most of my games. Let's push this even more. And so now, like, like you said, Grand Swiss, I think I played a couple of hundred something move games. I played a 236 move game. That's my record. Uh, several 180 move games. I mean, it's just because I don't want to agree a draw. I want to push. I want to squeeze. I want to like, and did I actually them, just did all of them end in draws uh that's not the point <laughs> maybe <laughs> um most of them did i managed to win i think my record win was 170 something moves so where, where are these games like, can, can you can you time and place them like context because i i yeah. even i don't know if i don't know the audience does not know <laughs> sure i don't even know um i mean in 2019 i played in the european club cup against Hare krishna very strong indian grandmaster and uh yeah that one my team needed me to win and I sat there for seven hours, 200 something moves, just trying to squeeze out some night versus Bishop Ben game. And then at some point I was like, wait, what's the world record number of moves? And it was just so blocked that I realized I could repeat and then make a pawn move 49 moves later to avoid the 50 move rule and then do it again. And I had like two traps in the position and I did set them just, I tried to make him kind of switch off before setting those traps. But uh, unfortunately, okay, 27, 50 player, he's going to spot them and it was a draw. Did he hate you after? Um, I don't know. A good sport I, about it. The arbiters hated me. Oh, I see. <laughs> like I see. one of the arbiters came up to me at, during the game. He was like, "Come on, just agree a draw." And I was like, "Dude, <laughs> that's so illegal. Like, it's your job." And then it turned out there was an arbiters party that night. Uh, so I kind of, <laughs> I literally the one night the arbiters had to kind of chill and. Um, oh my god! Yeah. Well, it was it was like late, like midnight, probably. It was, yeah, 10, 11 p.m., I think, uh, at the time. But, I mean, you mentioned as well, well, again, we mentioned the um, the Game 6, Magnus beating Nepomniachtchi. And uh, actually, as soon as that finished, like an hour later, I got text from Magnus being like, this one was for you, David. And, I mean, that was the moment when I was like, all the grinding, it had a reason. Um, and I discussed with him beforehand, like, clearly what he was trying wasn't working in the match. And 
I was just like, okay, you're, you've got better stamina than him. You've got the better nerves, just play a long game. And I didn't expect it to be a hundred something moves for him. And I didn't expect him to win <laughs> that specific game uh, as it happened. But sometimes that's just what you've got to do. Every, like you said earlier, everyone's so good nowadays. Maybe that's uh, just a kind of a nice weapon to have. Yeah, I kept making the the comment that when you give Magnus the Catalan, especially like all these odd ideas and move orders, it's like the last Infinity Stone. I mean, <laughs> it's just bullshit. Like he should just not be allowed to play that opening. And it, yeah. just any, I keep seeing him. People take the pawn on c4 and just lose. Like they just they just lose, man. And it's like one thing. I mean, you you've spoken to Magnus. I, I have I have no clue. Like why didn't he play it sooner? I, it just seems like the match yeah. made in heaven. That's what I just don't understand. But yeah, I mean, you're right. Like I've been, I think I was the last, I spent the last two years trying to persuade him to just to go knight f3, g3 every game because there's so many move orders. He's so flexible. He can transpose into a Catalan if he wants to. But yeah, uh, like you said, it's kind of a cheat code. <laughs> and I guess he, uh, Magnus and all the top players, they're just, they want kind of respect from their peers. They want to be artists. They don't want to be seen as kind of one trick ponies just kind of getting all the points in one specific way every time they want to be able to do everything. Um, Except yeah, with black, some of them with black, they, yeah. they, they, play, they play the same thing a lot, but. Um, that's true, that's true. But at least with white, there's like a yeah. badge of pride that uh, you have to do everything nowadays. I think it was, uh, it was in Matthew Sadler's book, right? Like when he was talking about Alpha Zero, um, the guys at the top are like bulletproof with black, with white, you just have to play whatever and, you know, be flexible and, yeah. Um, just get a position. That's what it seems like. Because with black people equalize with no problem. Yeah, I, I don't know how they do that still. Like, and whenever I play white, my opponents have equalized. Whenever I play black, I'm just sat there worse, like struggling yeah. to survive the open. Play 200 moves, and you know you. Uh, that's <laughs> that's the only way I can survive. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I I just enjoy the long games, and you mentioned the time trouble as well, and I think that's just a bad habit. Just adrenaline uh, junkie. But, oh, I see. Wow. Uh, but your, I'm trying your, to, uh, your I'm trying level to doesn't that. really drop that much, right? I mean, when you have to play fast. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess I grew up uh, maybe like you and a lot of kind of this generation. We grew up playing a lot online and stuff. And I think I just enjoy that thrill. And uh, Magnus as well. He jokes that I play much better with one minute on the clock than one hour on the clock because uh, at least I trust my instincts rather than overthink so yeah i mean it's one of those don't try it at home kids type of things but i just it's who i am now so. yeah i feel like we're yeah we're probably not the not the best role models i mean like in, in terms of especially now there's a lot of teenagers and adults trying to learn chess and i feel like they ask us questions about improvement and blitz and bullet mm. and i've sort of i mean people give very generalized answers and i kind of hate that i'm like you can't ask us these questions because we played chess when we were five yeah. so like we grew up on World Chess Live, Internet Chess Club, Fix. Yeah. I mean, yeah. God knows what Chess Cube. <laughs> like, <laughs> like all these sites, you know. I'm mean, not not all of us. I mean, uh, but like I've met people who who didn't really play a lot of Blitz and Bullet. But like, yeah, okay, we have twenty eight, twenty nine hundred, three thousand rated like Bullet ratings or whatever. But don't do that. I mean, you yeah. gotta like it's totally different. You play chess as a kid. Um, I'm assuming you're yeah. like, you, what, what's your Chess.com Blitz like? <laughs> 20, 29 something it's got to be 29 yeah. i feel like you're not I, a 2800 kind of guy <laughs> yeah i mean i ping pong between like 20 low 29 and low 3000 like i've been between there for like the last few years does it feel uh, good to be a 3000 like uh it does but then as soon as i drop like whenever i play title tuesdays or something if i lose one game drop to 2990 then i get really like Til then yeah. the tilt the tilt starts and then it's like oh god i've got to waste hours trying to get that back later <laughs> yeah your, your floor is like 2900 right like you cannot cross that because that's just yeah. now you said that probably next session i play i'll <laughs> I'll, well, I'll tank but uh, i mean some some people are way more uh yeah like my, my range i could be 28 30 and the next day i'm 26 60 it's like awful mm -hmm. i just i play like i'm brain dead uh but no, some people are not like that. I mean, I, I, I even see people bouncing like 50 points like here and there. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm assuming you've played like all the best guys like, I mean, Magnus, Hikaru, Danya, all these guys, right? Like, it, especially in the online stuff. A lot of them are like beasts online. Like, I, I talked even with Naraditsky about this. I think yeah. he's like a top 5 3 player in the world, but World Rapid and Blitz is a totally different thing. 3-2 over the board, you know. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, over the board blitz and online blitz, I mean, it's so different. There's different psychology, different tricks. Um, mouse, hand, it's a completely different kind of ball game. But yeah, I mean, I've, I've played all the top guys and they're just so strong. <laughs> I mean, uh, what's the I've difference, played... yeah, between like yeah. Uh, you and them? I mean, it's... yeah. I mean, they tilt very rarely or for maybe maximum kind of one or two moves at a time. Uh, and then they kind of recompose and you have to beat them all over again. Somehow they handle their clock so professionally. Like, I mean, they always seem to have seconds to spare at the critical moments. Um, they calculate when they need to. But then, I mean, when I play Blitz, I'm trying to calculate my way through everything. And uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But I mean, they all, they all kind of play by instinct just on feel for the first 20 moves. They'll now stop for 30 seconds, calculate the kind of the critical moments and and uh, yeah, still have time to spare. So, I mean, I'm lucky I've played Magnus over the board and uh, online in many, many Blitz games and uh, I've learned a lot. But yeah, I mean, still his level, like you said, Faruja, Naka, even Naroditsky, um, all these guys, it's just, it's just insane. Just, I, I just never see them tilt. <laughs> never. It, it also it also makes no no difference who uh, who's the highest rated. That's that's sort of what I feel like. Like yes, Ferruja Hikaru just got up to twenty nine hundred, but just now like Fabiano was number two. Like Magnus is the best player in the world in every format, except maybe Fisher <laughs> Random. That that's that one that seems to be Wesley for now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, but... keep uh, yeah, we got to keep posted on that because World Championship at the end. Well, just nearly two months uh, in Iceland. World uh, Fisher Random. I feel like Magnus wants that one. Yeah, I feel like yeah. he might be a little bit. That's that's I I get that feeling. I feel like um, it's the only one that really matters, right? Because like, okay, Crazy House, all these like other variants, they're sort of like bush league. But Fisher Random yeah. is still kind of legit. Like it's it, exactly it's chess basically, just without the openings, right? So it's again, it's a badge of honor for the top players who they're like, oh, we don't need our opening preparation. We don't need our thousands of hours studied on the Berlin. We can still do it, and they can. <laughs> that's the the scariest part yeah that that is that is pretty wild i mean it, it like you do see in the first 15 moves of fisher random some of those games kind of become mm -hmm. um you know they, they they kind of go into one another i think i think it was uh and start looking like a normal chess position i think hikaru yeah. said in fisher random you prefer to go with black which is fascinating i don't know if huh. you ever heard that or like agree with it. i have no clue i'm not smart yeah. enough to debate it but I mean, I guess if you're playing, like, normally what they do is they play the same position twice, once with white, once with black. Right. And then I guess it's easier to go with black. You see what your opponent does wrong. You see kind of... No, even, like, know. in general. Like, in any general. position. Okay. Yeah, he, like, prefers to oh, wow. start with black, which is... That's that's a bit rude. Like, <laughs> white still occupies the center first, right? White still gets developed first. Yeah, yeah, but sometimes you like move a knight out. Like you know, you don't even uh, you play. Yeah. You don't play a pawn move. I don't know. I, I mean, I I I I like Fisher and I like Fog of War. I like you know all these. Like, uh, I think I've seen you stream that like a while back. Like this is a year dude, or two ago. <laughs> I, I, sometimes I play it off stream. I just like boot it up for a few <laughs> games. I, I I but the problem is there's no like you know title players. It's all like kind of like noobs and. Yeah. Then they see me and they're just like, I watch your videos, and then they lose in five <laughs> moves. Um, and I, I, I but I, I like to play, uh, and I like yeah. to. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you play offline too, or you boot up a bullet game or two, some blitz games. Oh, oh man, just before I started talking to you, I, I think I played bullet for two hours, and really, and then it got to like quarter two, and I was like, shit, I got to talk to Levy in 15 minutes, but I'm on tilt. I got to hit 2900 again. I was playing on Lee Chess, and I was 2894 or something. I was like. If I don't make it, maybe I can postpone the podcast. That's <laughs> but luckily, <funny>. I <laughs> luckily I managed to win a couple of games, and I was like, perfect. Uh, this is. I think all the top players are addicted, right? Or just, I mean, anyone listening to this will be addicted probably I as play, well. I play chess every day, um, yeah. but that's it's funny you say that. I, I've I've talked quite openly about it, uh, at least like my my struggles in like tournament play. But even I mean, I could play like a blitz game at nine a.m. and it will ruin my day. Mm, like, and yeah. then I have to get it back, you know. Um, <laughs> 2 a.m. You can't sleep. What do you do? You open up an app. You play chess. Like, what? yeah, <laughs> nothing good ever happens after 2 a.m. It's just. <laughs> I feel. Are you? Do you? Are you like a, one of those chess players that also uh, can, can be like very sharp at night? Like you know, you play like some late night sessions. Like sometimes I play in bed and I'm I win you know 15 games in a row just the bullet or blitz or whatever. I mean, not blitz. I don't play 15 in a row in blitz. I don't have the attention span. But. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm known as a night owl. I really struggle uh, kind of waking up before 9, 10 a.m. It's because I'm watching stuff or 
playing chess or doing some kind of work until the early hours. And um, yeah, also, I think it was maybe six months ago now, but uh, that happened to me. I was like, oh, okay, I'll just play five bullet games before sleep. Uh, and it was 2 a.m. And uh, of course I got on tilt and I played for 18 hours without a break. Like I didn't even go to the bathroom, didn't get up, food, anything, just because I was so angry. Uh, you played so, for 18 hours? Yeah, that's. it was like 17 hours, 56 minutes or something. But yeah, just... This was recently? Like six months ago, yeah. And then I told my friends here and Magnus was like, dude, why aren't you streaming this stuff? And I was like, yeah, but I'm in bed, literally, literally balancing the laptop on my, be on my belly, like mouse in a hand. And maybe I should be streaming this stuff, but... Wow, yeah, that's, I mean, that's awesome. That means it took me three know, days to recover, but... Oh, but that's, <laughs> still, that, that's wild. Was that before or after you met the girl? uh that was after i she still doesn't know so. <laughs> <laughs> so what funny. is yeah uh, what does your wife think uh when you play when you play uh, these marathon sessions uh yeah i don't i don't do it as much now because i i i've gotten to the point where i feel really guilty and like horrible if i don't do enough things on my to-do list and i constantly yeah. push things back like i've yeah. i have like deliverables that are like some weeks out and i just have to work on them and um, okay. that's actually what happens. Like I, I get mad. Like I don't, I, I v very rarely have a long session where I just end up happy. Cause if I'm winning, I'm going to keep playing and <laughs> yeah. you know, I'll like play a cool game. I'll screenshot and I'll send it to, you know, a group chat, like, yo, check this. Like even this happened, um, even uh, pretty recently, I like uh, won a couple of nice games. I sent it. I'm like, I'm gonna jump in and play again. And I played a dude and I lost to a dude like 300 points lower than me. And I like swear he was cheating. Like there was just <laughs> no way. And, yeah, and, and yeah. I like that tilted me. Then I lost like three more games, you know, Ugh. down like 50 points. But God, fuck, damn, like, but I'm lucky in some ways that like I have a wife and dog around. I can't just go full goblin because yeah. if I was alone, <laughs> I think, yeah, easily, you know, um, you yeah, just, that's the, the pitfall for chess players, right? Just turn into that, that guy in the basement. He's just, I mean, yeah, honestly, like I remember, uh, that was one of the things I struggled with a lot. Like I, I, I'm assuming you don't have to do stuff like this because you're already like strong enough and you're like at an elite level. But if you're like 23, you know, 70 and you're just like learning some new openings, you're going to go play them. Like uh, you want practice. Like I don't know how yeah, you practice yeah. new opening ideas or even if you even practice opening ideas at your level. But I would go and I would like, you know, get on these blitz grinds on my anonymous account or whatever. And um, I broke my phone because... <sighs> I was in the middle of beating like a 2900 GM in like my all my prep, you know, and I was so hyped. <laughs> and then uh, like the, the touch screen stopped working and I flagged uh, like in the middle of a time scramble. Just to uh, and I just just I just like uh, spiked my phone like they do in football. I was I just threw it on the ground and it broke. And I was like, well, I feel stupid now. I don't have a phone. Um, that was the worst thing I've done. I haven't like yeah. broken windows or anything, but I was just like and that's when it hit me like. There's nothing worse than that moment right after you rage. <laughs> You're just yeah. like, what am I doing? <laughs> what am I doing? Yeah. Uh, and uh, my, my wife was there, you know. She 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 plays online. She got to like a thousand during this relationship, you know, and she also oh, wow. gets super mad and uh, <laughs> nothing quite like losing in chess. That's the dream, like finding someone who can embrace it and share the pain, and <laughs> but also support you and drag you out of it when you. Uh, you gonna you need. you gonna you gonna teach your significant other how to play or does she play? Um, no, not not a move. Uh, her dad plays. Her dad loves chess. So because of like Magnus or because of just his yeah. culture in Norway? Because of Magnus. Um, That's funny. Yeah, actually, like uh, the first time I met her was in a sauna in Norway and. Um, very random. And then Magnus was there, and I guess that's how we started talking. And they share the same birthday, and obviously he's like a massive celebrity in Norway. Um, but I think the the whole topic of the conversation was like her dad is like the biggest Magnus fan ever. Uh, so like a few months into the relationship, I, I arranged this. Um, <laughs> like her dad was in Norway, and he went to this chess pub, and uh, I arranged like his nickname is like Champagne George because he loves champagne. So I arranged for Magnus to like pretend to be the waiter and just bring over some complimentary champagne, and yeah, it just oh, blew yeah. his mind. It blew yeah, his well, mind. That's, that's super cool because because <laughs> on the one hand, from the outside, it feels like that whole world, like Norway, is just like a, it could be a very small world. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, there's millions of people, right? Like, so <laughs> if, if if your if, if your girlfriend's dad is a Magnus fan and you know Magnus, that doesn't mean that he gets to meet Magnus, right? It just it feels like it's like should be logical, but it you know <laughs> uh, I mean I'm assuming like Magnus is like 
top five most famous person in Norway, right? I mean, I... Yeah, yeah, I would say, yeah, top five. Oh, definitely top ten, uh, at least. Maybe apart from the royal family, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, uh, I don't know much about football, but I, I see there's a Norwegian footballer. Is it Haaland? Like, this dude is super yeah. famous now. Like, he's, he's really good. He's massive, yeah. Probably yeah. one of the best footballers in the world already. I mean, they have this golfer, uh, Victor Hovland. Uh, oh, uh, dude have... who won World Series of Poker now. Yeah, he, he was Norwegian, right? Yeah. The guy who just yeah. won. Yeah, and uh, yeah, they have a tennis player who's like top... 10 uh casper Ruud. they have yeah like the one thing i love about norwegian culture is they really really celebrate like they might have someone who's great at like watching paint dry like the world champion at watching paint dry but they'll still watch that and they'll celebrate his success <laughs> no matter what it is and that's why chess became so big here um like that's why hurdling became big that's why tennis now and wow. golf and poker uh, it's it, yeah, it, it's crazy because the, the effect Magnus has on sport, like I, yeah, that's exactly, when I, when I saw Casper Ruud for the first time, like I think mm -hmm. it was maybe last French Open he had a really good, or Wimbledon, he had some really good event, and he yeah, was maybe yeah. quarterfinal, and I'm watching him, and all I can think about is, I wonder if he gets the same reception, you know, <laughs> or, or a bigger reception, like I wonder what the sports hierarchy there is, uh, yeah. because I feel like you could be top 15, top 10 tennis player in the world, and still mm -hmm. be more famous than like a chess world champ because it's just tennis is enormous like everybody's gonna know who holland is right like i mean I, yeah now i know i <laughs> i don't even watch football he was on my twitter feed this morning and i was like oh mm -hmm. shit i didn't know that um, yeah i mean i guess yeah magnus and maybe fisher back in the day but they're real like uh they're like mega celebrities uh so different level what's your celebrity status in norway oh jeez <laughs> Is it, um, is it big like you walk down the street like is it once a day how or is it's, it it's not once a day maybe once a week or once every two weeks but um it's it's nice but it's always a shock when it happens um has it ever so, happened like close to home uh <laughs> sometimes i mean there was one time like i was walking a friend's dog and then the dog just went through some random stranger's legs from behind and i was like oh, i'm sorry i'm sorry and then the guy just looked at me and he was like Oh my God, David Hull, and <laughs> just some random guy on the road. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the nicest was in England. Like, uh, I haven't been back to England that much since moving to Norway. And I mean, like, th only two or three times. And um, I went back, I played some chess match there, just in the center of London. And I think it was like five times in three days. It was just, and like, I mean, like we said earlier, chess is maybe not the coolest in England. I didn't know people watch chess, and London has got like eight million people. It's like, uh, what are the chances but um yeah i mean it showed that chess is booming or at least people have <laughs> tuned in there is some interest so well, it's always even... nice for the game no oh, it's 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 uh it's it's awesome yeah obviously in london and new york it's all it's all quite different uh because it's sort of nice in these enormous uh metropolitan cities you you actually could just be a, like a random person i mean even if you have a youtube channel or a commentator constantly like yeah. You just go around, you know, to your local store. Like, nobody knows anything, you, just, you know. Um, exactly. You can go out, spend, like, 12 hours, and maybe, like, okay, one person sees you, and it's, like, far from home. Um, but uh, I, I do like to ask uh, because it's uh, – I imagine it's completely different than it was in 2019. I imagine in 2019 you just played chess, and, and that was yeah. sort of it. Like, I don't know. Uh, exactly. Even if I went up to people and I held my Wikipedia page in front of them, they'd be like – <laughs> what <laughs> but yeah i guess it's happened to you a few times right you must have yeah, yeah it uh, does and it i it's cool it's like you know i'm sure like, you do small talk and you know you get a selfie or whatever uh yeah. but uh it, it can be a bit jarring if it's as i'm turning onto my blog <laughs> and new york i feel like new york is not oslo you know what i mean like in new york yeah. we're suspicious of people like that's just uh, that's yeah. what happens you get 10 million people it's new york it's like <laughs> I'm sure London is the same. I don't know where you lived in England, but like, mm -hmm. you know, especially if you have like a standalone house or something, you got you need some security, like something, but. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, Oslo is the safest place ever. Like it's just I, everyone's friendly. I can imagine. Is it a, yeah. is it like a quaint little, like, I mean, it's a big city, but is there like just areas you can get an apartment and also be downtown and walk around? And I imagine Europe is pretty walkable yeah i mean getting the apartment is a challenge it's like the most expensive <laughs> one of the most expensive places in the world but but yeah i mean like you said it's everywhere's walking distance it's central like i mean for a capital for a kind of big capital city it's like six hundred thousand people it's uh, it's a lot but it's a lot but they're spread out and it's uh i don't know it's just nice to hang out and uh, i love the nature here it's very different from england where well at least london uh, where it's difficult to kind of find that nature and 
find that kind of personal space where you're happy and chilled out. One of my favorite things about this podcast is talking to people who live in Europe and getting very envious of their lifestyle. <laughs> man, the door's always open if you want to I mean, it's tough, man. You know, I see like visa programs and whatnot, and it, it's, a, it's a process. I mean, yeah. I got to think about moving to Florida, you know, because <laughs> it's got like no state income tax. And uh, I just, it's Florida, man. You know, we're not, you know, it's... You got to, uh, there's people going to listen to this and get offended, you know, because because Florida is they think Florida is a great state. But I'm <laughs> curious, what, what what is the perception of of, of America from over there? Oof, it's like question, a comedy man. club. Like what what is it? <laughs> I mean, I grew up watching like a lots of American movies, TV shows, sitcoms, and I I loved it. And I was lucky enough to kind of travel to US when I was young, like when I was like 2004. I think I played some tournaments. 2007, I went to US a few times. So. I think uh, my view is uh, a bit more balanced. Uh, it's based on more people I've met, but I do know a few people who have certain stereotypes. I guess it's the same when US uh, Americans have stereotypes of Europeans. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I, mean, I don't think we're allowed to, stuff, but yeah, but... Yeah, but uh... Uh, it's never bad stuff. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess a lot of what we consume is uh, based on big cities like New York or, um, I mean, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't know. I mean, I, I, <laughs> I love America, and everyone listening to this, I love you too. <laughs> it is the biggest chess audience, at least uh, for you know, for me on 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 some platforms. I, but I feel as though you got to kind of be self aware here too. You know, like I feel like if if you live in the states, you got to realize that like we're sort of two countries in one. It feels like you know what I mean. We got a, we got we got our two halves. New York is not a good microcosm of the U.S., but neither is like. You know, a rural town with 200 people where, um, you know, you yeah. got like neo-Nazi symbols. We got a nice mix of everything, you know, we got a... <laughs> it's a lot in between, right? Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of, a lot of stuff in between. But like I said, it, it, it is fun for me because I get to, I get to talk to people who live in like, you know, Netherlands, not even like a niche area, like Le Lex Veldhaus, for example. Um, yeah. And, uh, who would you so, say are the, who would you say the top three uh, people you've had on the podcast kind of around the world, like who you've spoken to kind of in terms of learning about their culture or interesting personalities? Is that a difficult man. question? Oh, oh my God. Um, <laughs> Turning it back on you now. <laughs> that's a good question. Okay. Uh, I really, I, I, I like talking to Samay a lot. Uh, okay. Uh, cool yeah, guy. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. He, he, he gave me a lot of, that was, that was a fun conversation. Um, mm -hmm. Lex, no mm -hmm. disrespect to a niche, you know. I feel like that was that was still like Netherlands, but I kind of like know about a niche. Like Lex convinced me to go to boxing classes, so that's you know an actionable oh, item wow. that I finished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, yeah, I kickboxed my friend for a hundred thousand euros. I was like, what the? F I'm a kickbox <laughs> Eric Rosen for a hundred thousand euros, you know. Um, <laughs> would you chess box, by the way? Um, not if I have to go up against you, but um, yeah, Aren't you like it's six foot two. Aren't you like huge? I'm, I am 6'2", yeah. Yeah, I'm not uh, going to fight you. You probably, like, how much, how, much, how much do you weigh? Is that, like, an appropriate uh, question to ask on a podcast? Touchy subject. Um, I, you, what, what kind of metric system do you use? It's, oh, yeah, we're in pounds, but you could give me kilos. Oh, I mean, I'm what? Um, um, one, I'm, like, 70 kilo, probably. So Okay, I'm, like, nine. I, I, I hit 100 recently, and that was embarrassing. So I've dropped down now to I'm about 92, 93. But, hey, David, uh, we're not going to fight. You kill me. <laughs> it doesn't matter how many bucks I got. I'll just it's sit like, on you. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, you know, I've been like, every time I talk, I, I would probably like to box somebody, but um, mm -hmm. they gotta be, I got to be my size. Like, everyone's like, fight this guy, fight this guy, fight. I'm like, <laughs> he's six feet tall and 30 pounds more than me. Like, I, why would I? But, uh, there must be some, some chess players similar, similar if, stature. If somebody was like, you know, you're, you're, your build you 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 don't think it would be a cool event it's it's actually pretty yeah. big in in england right yeah i've i've actually been to a few matches and oh my god the atmosphere is just incredible it's crazy right uh, like yeah <laughs> i mean i never thought i'd see the day people chanting after some like dude gets knocked out <laughs> like three moves into a chess game <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i mean i would be tempted but i think it would be more for the kind of training and more the kind of uh, a, a proper match itself would be a bit terrifying <laughs> I don't know. You've never, you've never been in, I've never been in a fight. So uh, yeah, I'm assuming you've also maybe never been in a fight. Maybe you have been in a fight. Maybe it wasn't, it didn't feel yeah. good. Uh, yeah, it's been a while. I was quite young. See, it's, I uh, never even had that. Like I, I grew up, you know, I, I talked a lot in, in school and I, I somehow yeah. I, yeah, I never, I never, never managed to get into a fight. So I, I imagine now as an adult, it's 
one you must punch. be terrified of that 70 kilos uh, coming at them. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like I get, you know, even drills in the gym, I get hit in the stomach. I'm like, that doesn't feel good. Um, that feels, uh, I, 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 I use this time to figure out the third person you asked me, you know, who influenced me culturally. Uh, good question. I don't know. Um, probably. Hmm. Alexandra Kostinuk was a very fun guest, like just uh, listening about okay. like, I mean, the whole, the whole like Russian chess culture, like upbringing and everything. Um, yeah, yeah. She, she, she was also kind of like a, like a young superstar, um, like playing chess yeah. in the, like <laughs> in parks and stuff like that, um, building like her yeah. own brand. Yeah, she's amazing, like a real force of nature. Like, I mean, she's, I mean, probably one of the fittest chess players out there kind of physically like works on that so much. Uh, I mean, she's still winning huge tournaments. She's, uh, she's, she's a mother, she's doing it all. It shows you can do it all. She is, yeah. Yeah, 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 she posts like tennis with her family. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I know, and she uh, feels like when she plays a tournament, she's just gonna win it. It's, I mean, exactly. they have some yeah. candidate cycle coming up. Um, you, uh, yeah. I, I asked you this, I meant to ask you this like way sooner, but then that's how <laughs> podcasts go. Sure. Uh, one thing I learned about you, and I told you this, like, I didn't know this, which means no one listening to this knew this. <laughs> and I want to ask you about it because I had, I just legitimately had no idea. I always knew you as like the, you know, board one, board two, like one of the highest like rated players in England, but chess, you never like Googled people in the chess world as much as you have since 2020 and like got to know like their background and whatnot. So I had no idea I think I knew that you had the record for the earliest defeat of a GM. Like, I think I knew that. I did not know you set the record for, you know you have this record, like the, yeah. the youngest ever to draw a world champion, a reigning yeah. active world champ. Yeah. And then I didn't realize you were just like a crazy like celebrity when you were like a lot younger. And I, and I can imagine you like, this is a totally different time period. So it's probably like mm -hmm. kind of draining to even like think about, but can you, can you like talk me through that? Like being eight, beating John Nunn, who I imagine was a like, pretty big legend or superstar yeah. or, you know, whatever it is. And then, like, everything that happened after that, like, did it lead to burnout? Was it good? Was it bad? Yeah. Um, I mean, really good question. And um, I think I kind of, uh, yeah, I mean, it's been a roller coaster journey. I mean, when I was eight years old, I, I think, okay, nobody really has conscious thoughts there and nobody has kind of yeah uh, big plans and everything. And I just kind of happened. Uh, I was just playing a tournament. I didn't think of myself as especially talented or especially strong um i i mean i just uh, played this grandmaster in some uh, rap i think blitz tournament five plus three and um somehow i just outplayed him and won a really nice game and i think the next day i turned up for the next uh, bunch of rounds and then there were photographers there there was camera crew um like a couple of days later i was on the front page of like the biggest newspaper in england and like suddenly it got to my head i was like wait, am I good at this game? Maybe I should just <laughs> play it forever. <laughs> and I think for the next few years, that that one thought drove me. And I was a bit a bit of a shy kid. I did the television interviews and everything just kind of because I had to, or I felt I had to not, I didn't know there was another option. And, um, and yeah, I decided, okay, let's do this chess thing. And it got to the age when, yeah, maybe 11, I drew with Kramnik. Um, like I got this GM norm at maybe 13, 14, got 2,500 and I was like, okay, um, let's keep going. But then for some reason, I think I was on some TV show in England and like all my, all my classmates had seen it. There were so many jokes. It was like, I loved, I loved being at school. I, I was, I tried to be quite social. I loved playing sport and everything. And I just decided, okay, let's focus on this. Like chess will always be there. Um, and I didn't realize, I think at the time, that actually those formative years are like the most valuable for chess players. Like you see these young grandmasters now and that's when you make your big yeah. <laughs> push um, when there's no other distraction, you have full support of your family and everything. And like, I was lucky, my my mum and dad, they were like, uh, they didn't play chess at all really. They were always super supportive. They said, the day you stop enjoying it, you can stop, we won't push you. But in hindsight, I wish they were a bit pushier. Like. <laughs> I wish they'd been like, okay, you're super good at this. Just stick at it. Like, you don't need to do the cat, like the publicity stuff. Wow. Um, you, uh, I, I don't mean to jump in. You, you took the question I was gonna say. That's actually so wild because I was about to ask you a question. Like, 
uh, mm-hmm. where were your parents in this? I mean, were they like, yeah. uh, oh my God, you know, some parents are like, oh, my kid's talented, go in front of all these mm-hmm. cameras. But like, you also have the opposite, which is basically what you had. I had the same thing, yeah. but my parents split, but they were both uh, sort of like, my mom was like, oh, he's good at chess. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and my dad, like he was a little bit of a chess player. We, we played every now and then, but like he had to take me to all the tournaments and, you know, but even he, mm-hmm. like I got to like 12, 13, I started, you know, struggling and I said, I'm done. I hate this game. I'm not going to play anymore. And they were like, okay. But in hindsight, I wish one of them whooped my ass. <laughs> like, what is exactly. like, what are, you, are you crazy? You know, like, what? yeah. And I, to this day, I think if I played chess in those two and a half years, I probably would have made GM and at least I would, you know, sleep at night a little bit better. But um, <laughs> think where we'd be now. Like, yeah, we'd both be 2800. Easy. Uh, yeah, 2900, <laughs> you know, we would have. Uh, but no, I mean, it's, yeah, it's true. You come back and it's totally different. I, all my goals were different. Like, when I hit IM, I, that was it for me. I never thought about becoming GM. So, I'm I'm glad you 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 brought that up because uh, it's good to have the support, but it's also kind of nice for someone to like whip you into yeah, shape because yeah. you can't make your life decisions when you're 14. And exactly, I guess that's what you're describing, yeah. Yeah, I mean, everyone's emotional, hormones, everything, and I was just yeah. And then I kind of took a break for a while, played a bit more, kind of when I was 16, 17. I think I became a GM at 16. Just again, it was just I played a tournament. I wasn't especially pushing it, but um, and again, I took a step back and I was like, oh. Do I have to? But then I think all that experience of like the media and dealing with that and kind of, I learned a lot about myself. And I think that's how maybe all these years later, like 20 plus years later, um, I feel a bit more chilled out about the whole media thing and having to deal with social media, like um, having to deal with questions, interviews. I realized that, I mean, if I could have done it then when I was a kid and I knew nothing and I didn't have anything interesting to say, then I could probably do it now. And um and i enjoy chess a lot more like after university just i came back it was like a backup plan and i thought okay there's no pressure anymore Um, and i feel that now like i still commentate teach i write for a newspaper and playing like when i do it it's like uh it's so much more fulfilling um so yeah i think the child (laughs) the child prodigy and the life i have now like complete opposites but then somehow it made me who i am today kind of <laughs> yeah, I, by hook or by crook. Yeah. I, I I can't imagine. I mean, um, I was just a random, you know, eight nine year old playing some tournaments. Uh, <laughs> if I if I was any good, I, I I don't know what it was like to have media attention. Like I'm sure we had number one ranked kids here in the U S. But I think chess was a very isolated world. Like I think your local newspaper in the town you lived would write something about you. You know, if you lived yeah, in one of the fifty yeah. states. But like, how come you never got a did you get any sort of like I don't, in, in England's big to like get like a knighted or something like that? That never happened, right? Because you don't have letters after your name, or do you? <laughs> um, no, unless unless I count my university stuff, <laughs> but uh, university degree. But yeah, I mean, actually, it's funny you mentioned that. My I kind of have three goals left in life, or mm. maybe three or four, uh, professionally at least. And um, one of them was to win an Olympic medal, so I managed to do that a few months nice. ago. <laughs> um, another is. Okay, to get back to 2700 and then I'm going to retire. Okay. Win a few more British championships, ideally. Um, But that's less of a kind of urgent one. But then the final one is to get a knighthood. That's just the dream. Uh, How do you how do you do that? What is the is it OBE? Is that the one? Yeah, I mean, there's I'm not sure exactly the hierarchy, but there's OBE, there's MBE and then there's like the knighthood. So like Sir Sir Levy, Sir David. Oh, Sir David Howell. Oh, wow. (laughs) that's that's the dream um how do you like, level up you got to get reunited or just <laughs> i'm not sure really i mean knighthoods i, I think you, if do, you don't know like, i don't know so <laughs> yeah i mean <laughs> i'm miles away i think i only know two chess players who've uh, ever got that um kind of got letters after the name like nigel short um oh. just because he was a uh, world championship challenger in 93 and raymond Keane, like uh uk's f- oh, yeah. uh, second ever grandmaster quite a famous writer and um yeah, I think uh, in general, you have to be really successful in your field in whatever that field is. And ideally, you have to do quite a lot of charity work. So um, I'm going to start on that one. Oh, that's so, why Tommy Shelby um, got knighted. <laughs> <laughs> that's, oh, I didn't know that. Wow. Um, I, my wife yeah. and I, we binge watched the whole show in, uh, like, really? in like a week or two. Did you watch Peaky Blinders? Uh, I think I haven't watched the last season, but uh, I did. Yeah. Back in, you got to you gotta watch that. It's a classic. Time. The, I, but I think it's my favorite show. I don't like shows, and oh, wow. I couldn't get enough okay. of that show. Um, <laughs> that was a lot of fun. I, I hate. Do you get asked about Peaky Blinders a lot because you're British? 
I, the Fuck. question comes up. God damn it. I see, I knew it, but like I couldn't, you know, I couldn't resist, you know? Uh, I'll let you off. I'll let you off this one. Uh, <laughs> what was your least favorite season? Gotta be the Russian season, right? That was a weird uh, season. Yeah, I mean, I still, I mean, I still liked watching it. I think that was when I kind of just had it on in the background rather than kind of glued mm. to the screen. Um, I was glued to the screen, yeah. I was, my wife and I were like, what is this? Like, what, what are these Russians <laughs> doing? I don't, nobody understands what's going on. The Did Italian season was fun, though. The Italian season. <laughs> Oh man, you're making me want to go back and you gotta watch, start I'll from tell you. scratch and then hit the last season. I'm gonna tell you right now, last season, garbage. Oh, really? Yeah, like wow. it was all right. It was good. It's yeah. the Peaky Blinders. But I yeah, yeah. I sat through some episodes in last season, like what happened? But I think what happened yeah. was um, the actress who, uh, well, spoilers, yeah, yeah. you guys may want to pause here. Mm. But yeah, the actress who played, you know, Polly passed away. And that, I think that just, I think it fucked yeah. up a lot of things. So it's hard to come back from something like that. But. Yeah. Um, but yeah that's uh knighthood that's the dream and also i think you have to have someone nominate you so i need to blackmail someone into doing that for me. and it can't be a fellow knight like nigel short can't nominate you it has to be someone i don't know i'll, I I'll, I'll call okay. up the queen next time i'm uh, back in the uk you're probably, you're probably young right like you got to be like at least like 40 i feel like yeah i mean I apart from apart from some sportsmen like andy murray tennis player yeah David that makes Beckham. Make sense yeah yeah Speaking of national celebrities, um, yeah, I feel like there's there, there's a lot. Uh, well, yeah, that's a uh, knighthood shit. That'd be, uh, yeah. that'd be pretty cool. I mean, cool. I have this running joke with Vichy Anand, and like every time I see him, he calls me like Sir David just to mock me. I think like, that's crazy. <laughs> you just have a running right. joke with a five time with a chess god. You know, <laughs> um, you know, the closest I came to Vichy Anand was my friend found his cameo and like paid him to wish me happy birthday. It was hilarious. <sighs> I did not know Vichy Anand had a, and he was like. I, I heard Vichy say danger levels. It melted my heart. You know, I was like cracking up. Um, that's crazy. Oh, man. Calls you yeah. Sir David, huh? That's, uh... Yeah. I mean, in India during the Olympiad, he was just laughing that like some people would ask me for selfies and completely miss him walking like right next to me. So <laughs> that's his revenge. I think. But like, I didn't know he had a in India? People in India? Yeah. Oh I'm, my God. Like, I think they just hadn't clocked that he was there and they just spotted me, but he just walked past and he was just like. <laughs> Vishy uh, he can just walk in public in India? That's like fascinating. I mean, it would I mean, like... he had security most of the time because he's okay. a god. And if they had spotted him, they would have swarmed him for sure. But, uh, but yeah, I didn't know he had a cameo. I only learned what that was actually like last night watching the John Oliver show, like, this cameo. And oh. I might have to call up Vishy and be like, yeah, just. <laughs> yeah My friend, I, le please. I learned about what that was then I, I didn't actually know like much more but uh yeah you pay people to you know write business messages like if you have yeah. a company and you want to start off a corporate meeting um i always thought it was a little bit weird but you know uh, i don't know if you've ever gotten requests like this but i get like dms that are like hey my boyfriend watches your videos can you record yourself wishing him a happy birthday i did a few and then i was like no this is like <laughs> weird you know yeah. um but you charge for that so yeah, yeah. Maybe that's that's the next step. Or when I when I'm unemployed, I just <laughs> set up that's a cameo. That's sort of how I felt about it. I was like, I don't need this. Like, I'm good. Like, I have a profession. Yeah. It's like a unique yeah. one. But why am I getting paid to shout out people's birthdays? Like, I don't want to do that. Yeah. But uh, I might do it because, like, why not? You know? Exactly. I mean, if it makes someone's day, it's nice, right? Like, I wish I did. Like, I've had a few as well, and I just feel bad sometimes. I just ghost them, but uh, not not because I'm don't want to do it. It's just. Yeah, it's, yeah. I don't know what to say, to be honest. It, like, yeah, that's one thing I, one of the, one of the things I was going to ask you was like in 20, 2019, you, I mean, even now maybe, but like you have all your social media, like just wide open, you know, somebody could DM you, right? Like yeah. message requests or whatever. How has it been to just like explode in popularity? I mean, it's, 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 I tell you, I talked about it many times in the podcast. This is weird. You got to like close off a lot of different channels and you got to like isolate yourself a little bit because it's overwhelming yeah. stuff. Uh, yeah. it's, it's intense. I mean, my experience was probably a fraction of what you, <laughs> what you went through, but like you said, it's, yeah, it's, it takes a while to get used to. I mean, 99.9% .9 of it is super positive. Mm -hmm. So I love, I love that. But, um, yeah, I think uh, the stuff that uh, kind of got me down initially was that there were a couple of, uh, you know, there's always a few troll comments and uh, stuff like that. So it took me a while to kind of realize that actually, like, it's a minority. Actually, it doesn't represent, it doesn't mean anything. Not even trolls. Some people are just mean. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. Some people I, just, <laughs> just I opened, mean stuff. 
Yeah, I opened Instagram like first thing this morning. Just I, I saw I had some notifications. Like I was in bed still. I opened it and there was like some super racist comment, and I was like, Jesus Christ! Like, on like on like one of your photos. Yeah, on one wow. of my photos, it was like, yo, an illegal immigrant, like f off back home. Like, like in Norway. Uh. <laughs> I don't know what it even meant. It was just a, on one of my pictures. <laughs> I think it meant in Norway, yeah. And then wow. it said, you should be playing for some Asian team, not uh, not the England team. Uh, so I was just, uh, I mean, it's stuff like that occasionally. It's uh, hard oh, to read. Wow. Oh, yeah, wow. and like, I sometimes get comments being like, oh, out of all the English speaking commentators they could have found, why did they find the one? And then they make some comment about my face or appearance. And, I see. Like, so you stuff even, like that. Are you half Asian or are you... Yeah, like my mom's from Singapore, um, so she moved. Oh, she moved to the, the UK to study. Best country in the world, dude. Best country oh. in the world. <laughs> Thanks, man. Wait, have you been? Uh, I went. Yeah, I mean, maybe you disagree, but I feel like as an outsider, I like how they do things in Singapore. Like, if it says no smoking <laughs> and you smoke, they just beat the shit out of you. That's how it should be. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I went to a college with a no smoking sign, and we had a smokers' corner. I hate that. <laughs> like, you know, Singapore could be a bit better with some things, LGBT, that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like, I, I, re I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. I like how they do things in Singapore. Yeah, I mean, baby steps. They did legalize uh, like homosexuality recently, so. Um, like a million miles to go but still uh... there we go yeah I, that's the thing <laughs> on Twitch. i talk about singapore someone's like you know they're they're anti-gay like are you homophobic and i'm like just shut up yeah. like yeah. no but yeah i went my uncle lives there he got a permanent residency which i hear is like very hard to do oh yeah um, singapore is super strict on that uh, yeah so he like he's like raising his son there and um it just seems like a fun place hot hot as hell but yeah yeah um, i mean if, if you're willing to take like three showers a day then it's perfect place to, that's uh, to live by 10 o'clock it was i was drenched so it, it, yeah it was it that's maybe the one thing i would i would not like so much but i don't know if you agree or disagree but i i like it seemed it seemed great but yeah yeah no i, I mean i love it i like i have something like 39 cousins over there so oh. i try to go back and visit but <laughs> but yeah oh. it's uh i i guess i grew up in the uk i was born there so it's kind of i identify more uh Wow, the British you were culture. born in the UK and you still get told things like that's wild, man. Wow. Yeah, but that's that's social media. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's loads of positive stuff, and I, yeah, I, yeah. I kind of try to embrace that more now. And I've started posting a bit more on Twitter and Instagram just because actually I quite enjoy the process. I, I used to find it a bit intimidating, a bit scary. I didn't think I had anything kind of meaningful or witty to say, but <laughs> now I just kind of if I have a thought, I'll just post it or if if and there's a cool picture and it's just it's out there it's <laughs> many people don't have anything important to say and they have two million followers on social media you know what i mean so it's uh yeah me too like i, I recently i like started looking i'm like man i post a lot of stupid thoughts on twitter and then i'm like nobody cares you know what i mean like something like yeah. okay point oh 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 one percent of people take things like really seriously but mm -hmm. You know, Twitter is like a mix of like trolls, memes, people shitting on, you know, sponsors that people get. Cause like Twitter seems like a very anti sponsor place in general if you ever post sponsors there. And uh, yeah. the, you, you remember the Indonesia thing, right? Like, I don't mm -hmm. know how much you yeah, remember that whole yeah. thing, but the cheating so, scandal. Yeah. yeah. So, like, yeah. since then, I have no notifications on. So I post <laughs> whatever. I don't see it. It's kind of nice, but it sucks because you can't really interact. Like I don't interact that much and it's yeah. a little bit sad, but I think that's just what you have to do because one negative comment could just like mess up your day and you're just like, exactly. can't let that happen. Um, yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, what was this? Uh, Johan posting like some Norwegian messages he was getting uh, during yeah. the Olympiad. Like, I don't know yeah. what it said. I'm sure it said something <laughs> bad, you know? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't positive. But yeah, I guess, especially if we're playing chess or like streaming, stuff like that, we can't let things affect us too much. Um, so yeah, I mean, the world is what you make it. If that's social media, like uh, limiting notifications, if that's just not having social media, which I know a lot of chess players do, uh, they kind of go down that route. Like, um, yeah, I mean, I, I find it quite a nice tool to have and nice ego yeah. boost occasionally but but yeah i mean it's uh, it makes sense i've i've been actually been thinking of copying you and doing the no notification thing just because i spend if i get one notification i'm like oh yeah yeah I, mean, and I, it's, uh, I deleted twitter gone. and reddit from my phone like two weeks ago because and, and now i just find myself absent-mindedly hitting the instagram app mm -hmm. i mean it's crazy it's like such a poison or i just go to a reddit chest or something like i, I open up apps yeah. in safari because i'm just <laughs> yeah, a piece yeah. of shit like i just <laughs> Every, you, everyone needs a vice right everyone needs some kind of yeah 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 habit. what what's what's your vice 
What do you spend time uh, besides 18 hours in bed playing bullet, but like uh, oh, sports, yeah. like <laughs> scores, like what? It yeah, I, I play this. This is one computer game, like Football Manager. It's you don't even play the games. You just simulate being a manager, like yeah. buying, selling players. It's basically doing someone else's admin. Like, I didn't even do my own admin, but I'm just like doing the emails of a fictional football manager. And like, I don't know why it just gives me such a thrill. And I think I've I checked how much I played that recently, and it's like six months of my life, uh, like burnt <laughs> <laughs> wow. since since I was like twelve till now. Like, uh, but it was so worth it. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. I, I've I've gone through binges. I don't have any video games now, but like I, I played Overwatch. Like I that nah, became yeah. such a huge part of my routine during pandemic, <laughs> just hours every night. Uh, yeah. And I, I'm sure you've played like some video games. It can just be really. Mm -hmm draining to get off a video game at 1 a.m. and you just had like a brutal argument with some stranger who called you a bunch of racial slurs you know and you're just yeah. like why am i doing this to myself exactly um, but yeah i mean it's better than maybe other vices drinking gambling which i know um yeah i mean can can affect people like i mean chess players who I mean, like if you gotta choose, you time. probably choose uh, probably choose drinking and not gambling. I feel like I feel like gambling. Yeah. I don't know. It's tough. I don't know. <laughs> I know a lot of chess players who gamble. They hit the casino after a really stressful game, and it just helps them to de-stress. But... I've heard that. Yeah, I know. There's like even non-elite players that just like go to like local poker casinos. They play like you know thousands yeah. of hands of poker, and then you know they win opens, but they lose it all in in poker. It's yeah. It's, I can't imagine. Um, exactly. And yeah, I mean, drinking is uh, another good way to kind of switch off at the end of the day, but you've got to limit it. <laughs> of course, yeah. yeah, PSA, uh, as we yeah. as we as we round up today's episode, you know, you can drink, <laughs> but you know, don't 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 go don't go too hard. Um, oh yeah, let's start. Yeah, start dishing out the cliches and the moral compasses. Uh, it's impressive. People hear it. That means they watched hundred percent of the episode. Uh, do you like podcasts? <laughs> you like any podcasts? Like, what do you what do you listen to? Yeah, um, actually, like, uh, I only got into podcasts really a few months ago. Um, I'd always been a fan of Perpetual Chess Podcast. And uh, of course, like, yeah, I spoke to Ben, like, back at the beginning of the pandemic. And I think actually off the back of that, I managed to, it, it, it kind of opened some doors for me. But uh, yeah, I mean, I started just out of, because uh, they asked me to kind of do some podcast of my own with the Champions Chess Tour, where we just interview the players. It wasn't anything beyond that. It was just kind of purely for kind of publicity purposes um, and we were kind of told what we should what topics we should uh, kind of discuss and stuff but I was just really nervous so I started listening to like these really popular podcasts even Joe Rogan and stuff just to see like the flow and when yeah, the yeah. questions come and um, and uh, I found myself going down some rabbit hole I think I spent like two weeks just non-stop listening to a bunch of different podcasts I have some mental health podcasts some, uh, some just general ones and um, and then, yeah, uh, I've listened to a couple of your episodes. I, I love this Chicken Chess Club podcast. Uh, yeah, yeah, I saw, like, I saw that too, yeah. Yeah, just because I know the guys there. There's another English one um, called, I think, The Chess Pit. And they're quite niche, but they're quite funny, quite good. Um, yeah, there's a whole bunch nowadays. It's uh, very different when you have like a studio with two people and you can sort of start an episode and talk some, you know, talk some shit. And then like, you know, someone joins <laughs> and then they leave. And yeah, I, I, I like... I follow some podcasts too. Yeah, I mean the Joe Rogan, like the interviewing there is spectacular. They have like a great studio. You know, everything's super high quality. Um, it's very different. <laughs> yeah, very very different. I mean, I, I obviously I'm, I know he gets canceled like once a week basically, so it's kind of tough <laughs> nowadays to say you like anybody. That's sort of the joke I have. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I was like collabing with Ludwig. I'm I'm I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sure you know and. Uh, yeah. I said some comment along the lines of, uh, I like Jerry Seinfeld, you know, I've been watching Comedians in Cars, uh, this show, like this, you know, have you seen it on Netflix? It's this fun show. Um, yeah. And somebody was like, oh, you know, when he was 35, he dated a 17 year old. I was like, come <laughs> like, Perfect timing. <laughs> I mean, you just can't like anybody anymore. <laughs> it's just, yeah. you, know, that, 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 you know, my favorite comedian was Louis C.K. Oh, gosh, yeah. Let's just hope we don't get cancelled after this podcast. <laughs> uh, yeah, David, if I gotta, you know, take down this episode because you know you you for some reason do some stuff in your spare time, you know, I'll be I'll be sad. But uh, yeah, we we don't we don't have that a lot in chess. Like even our biggest dr drama blowups go away in like two days. It feels like it, it's yeah, it's weird. We're just not as connected to the rest of the world yet. <laughs> That's um, true, actually. Yeah, I mean, I don't know whether Sergei Karyakin's back in anyone's good books, but apart from that, yeah. Uh... That's a weird one. I don't know what's going to happen there. Yeah. Um, 
That's a that, that's a great point. <laughs> well, I don't know. That's just the only cancellation I've kind of can think of right now. Yeah, that was like a that was an intense one. It wasn't even like a public thing. It was like an official statement, you know. And then um, yeah, I mean, it's rare to see Fide get involved with any kind of any yeah, you know, dirtying their hands with any kind of proper serious stuff. But, I know that was that, that was intense. I mean, the whole Magnus thing, right? The the match uh, mm -hmm. and then like step, you know, declining yeah. to uh, to play. That's pretty. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. I'm gonna have a match with uh, with no Magnus. I don't know. I'm excited to see what what the future holds. Um, yeah, I'm excited too. I mean, yeah, I tried to dissuade Magnus <laughs> several times, but he had his heart set. When did he tell you? Can you tell it? Can you tell um, me that or not really? <laughs> I mean, he'd already been talking about it as far back as last year. Uh, like privately or publicly? Because nobody, private. I'll be honest, nobody knows what Magnus means like anytime he talks. Like it's like when Anish Giri tweets, like I feel like Magnus talks, we're like, yeah. It's just, <laughs> it's weird, even though he's very matter of fact. There's this weird yeah. effect where it's like the door is still open, but I guess he, he knew for a while. Is that? Yeah. I mean, he always says stuff, right? With like a kind of smile in the corner of his mouth, like a yeah, little bit. Um, exactly. But, but yeah, I think the default setting with Magnus is like take him literally because even if he's got a smile on his face, often there's a literal meaning and there's a hidden meaning as well. But the literal meaning is always there, like as mm -hmm. the baseline. Um, but yeah, I mean, I remember World Championship last year, he was already saying how stressful it was. And he wasn't really enjoying the process of prep, like the preparation and uh, training camps. And um, I mean, he's got is a great team around him, but yeah, I, I think he was already ready kind of mentally to just chill a bit. Is it because it's just the, like a phenomenon of like you're at the top for so long you're not actually striving to win anything it's like you don't get anything for winning you yeah. you, you just get the same thing <laughs> it's, yeah <laughs> it's weird it's like i don't know um exactly i mean it, everyone has different motivators right and yeah like if it were me i'd be like oh my god it's so much money like it's so much fame glory like the record of the sixth title i would play with, like without a doubt but i mean he's at a time of his life like early 30s now where he's got to prioritize other things he wants to i mean um he still wants to play chess of course but maybe uh, not as intensely trained as as before so i mean we can't blame him he's got his own decision to make but yeah it's, it's a pity seeing a rematch with him and nepo would have been nice but yeah. would it have <laughs> i don't know i mean <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know you need a new face you know, yeah, you need you true. need a new face. I mean, okay, come on, Magnus Hikaru would have been dope. Oof, even yeah. even Ding would have been cool, but Hikaru would have like broken the internet. Uh, yeah, regardless of what I mean, the result would have been, it doesn't matter. Like it's the whole build up. It's the whole <laughs> exactly. You know, yeah, he had the edge in classical for a big edge, but uh, it's you know, you know, it's the whole there's the whole build up. So yeah, I mean, I've I've got a mixed history with Hikaru, but I was his number one fan during during the candidates i was cheering for him like, like you yeah said, i was match. like <laughs> come on i mean and then Jan just showed up and <laughs> it, it, it wasn't uh those events are always pretty wild candidates always have some crazy uh swings during yeah. you know, games rounds and everything um yeah, I, li I, I like ding a lot we'll see how he holds up i really think that his match with nepo is 50 50 like it's yeah. not close at all i mean it's not uh split open at all uh super yeah. close yeah um, Definitely. On paper, it's probably the closest match we've seen in, I mean, decades. Uh, yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's because yeah, you know we'll one see. guy's to blame for that. You know, uh, just <laughs> yeah. guy who's not guy who's not playing. Um, it's, uh, <laughs> he what knows. The, I always I always sign these things off by by saying uh, like what's what's next for the guest. And to be honest, in your case, I legitimately have no clue. I imagine you have a meltwater event at some point, and yeah. what else is. Yeah. What else is on the table? I mean, my answer is pretty much the same as yours. Uh, so I do have, uh, there are three more tournaments in the Mount Water Champions Chess Tour scheduled for the season. But beyond that, I have no clue. Um, I I mean, I guess day, we'll see how this day to day like, Oh, you don't have a, a tournament that you're playing? No, I mean, I, I actually posted recently on social media saying like, I did consider myself semi-retired until this Olympiad and now I'm inspired to play more. And I genuinely am, but... I think I'll leave the playing for 2023. I will kind of want to get my life sorted a bit. Kind of, uh, I'll see how this merger goes, uh, this chess.com uh, play Magnus group thing. Um, I mean, who knows? I might be commentating next year. I might not. If not, then I'll have much more free time to play chess and uh, maybe try streaming a few other things. Um, I, I mean, I, I love to keep busy, so I'll find something to do. Uh, I, won't <laughs> I won't disappear yet, but um, yeah, I, I think commentary, and hopefully some game, uh, some 
tournaments from January onwards. You available for lessons? What if people watch the episode? They like you. They want to <laughs> pay you a lot per hour for lessons. I mean, if you can buy me a castle in the UK, then yeah, I'm down. I'm down. <laughs> Do you have a website, by the way? Oh, it's under construction. Okay. Because I feel <laughs> yeah. like a lot of top guys, they just have a website in their name. So I feel like that's the easiest way, right? But yeah, no, I'm, ser- it, I'm serious. It, you never know. You know, I'm sure. I'm sure you've been contacted for lessons too, right? They sort of like. Yeah. The... I mean, I, I get messages about it quite a lot. And I'm genuinely keen to start teaching more. I think that's actually my real passion. Like the commentary just kind of happened. But oh. um, I really enjoy it. I think that's why I love that football manager game. Like just molding a player, like teaching them, helping them level up. Um, I think that might be my future. Like, I've been a second a few times for some play, uh, some really strong players, and I really like that was like the highlight of my career. Maybe so, maybe that's the future. Yeah, feel free, anyone, slide in my DMs. Uh, oh, I'll throw <laughs> we'll it. I'm asking out. now; they'll hear it now, but I'll throw it in the intro too. You know, just <laughs> just uh, just for good for good measure. Um, yeah, I, I'm sorry if we went over, uh, but uh, I mean, this cool. was a this was a lot of fun. So, yeah. uh, super good to meet you. As I told you before we started recording, I. Uh, I feel like we're in the same world. We talk about the exact same thing, but we just we not, don't necessarily like talk or interact. Uh, but yeah, um, it's, uh, I sh- I'm sure we will more in future now. Yeah, start and, streaming. Uh, you know, I'll, uh, I'll send you some people. You know, hype, oh, hype up the channel. My degenerates will become your degenerates. It'll be great. It'll be, uh, Perfect. Uh, um, yeah, sounds good. I mean, uh, all the best if you if you play, and if you don't, then all the best with with all the other stuff. You you hit the gym every Thank day. You. Or no, I no. cancelled my gym membership recently. I'm more like a, I'm more like a outdoor runner, or I'll play okay. sports with my friends. Like, okay, I'm not the great with I'm not so great with the lifting and the discipline and the routine. So okay, well, if I can recommend anything, it's yes. try out some one on one boxing classes if you can. That stuff is okay. awesome. So okay, I'll blame you when I'm. Uh, no. You don't have to fight anybody, Getting... but it's cra- <laughs> it's crazy conditioning. It's so good. Um, oh, I can imagine. Yeah, it's such a rush as well. Yeah, it's uh, it's a lot of fun. It's it's good to improve, and you know you feel yourself getting better. Um, and I'll uh, I'll let you know when I post the episode. It should be like you know up in in a week or so. As always, folks, if you've made it this far in the show, I want to say thank you for your continued support of my content. You can support me with donation links on Twitch and on YouTube, or if you'd like to check out one of my chess courses, all you got to do is go to GothamChess.com. I will see you right back here in Gotham City with our next guest, hopefully very soon.